Hello everyone, this is Wileam here. In today's videos, we're going to do a quick start guide on how to get started with your XA7. So right here in front of me is all of the equipment that you need. So let's go ahead and go through it really quickly. Obviously you need the camera body and the lens. You want a fully charged battery, which in these new cameras over here, you actually charge it through the USB port, which is right here. So a good thing to do is to make sure that your battery is charged before we start this. And then of course we need the SD cards. Now we are gonna spend a few moments talking about SD cards because it is rather important. A lot of people just reuse their old SD cards, but for a lot of these new cameras, you do want to get new SD cards. And these are kind of the newest versions of the SD cards. If I had money to spare, I would definitely recommend buying the SDXC version, which is the latest version, the latest format. It starts at 64 gigabytes. And what you're looking for is a V90, which will allow you to do the 300 megabytes read and write. So these are really nice cards, but they are also very expensive. Now, if you don't want to spend as much, you can grab the 32 gigabyte version, which is the SDHC version. So this is the previous generation's SD cards. And most likely what you want to do is you want to grab the 32 gigabyte version and again you're looking for that 300 megabytes read and write a lot of the really good video features is going to require very fast sd cards and also in general in order to clear your buffer when you're taking a lot of pictures all at once you really do want a very fast sd card transfer so these new cards will allow for that so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the lens so here is the cap so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it counterclockwise and that's going to reveal the sensor and with these uh, simple, I guess, clear uh, protectors, all you want to do is you just want to lift and that will go ahead and take off the protector. What you're looking for here is the red dot and you're also looking for the red dot on the camera body itself. Go ahead and align these two together. And now what you want to do is you want to rotate clockwise until you hear the click and the camera lens is now installed. So the next thing to do is to flip the camera body over going to go ahead, open the bottom, and we're going to go ahead and install the battery. So you'll notice there is this orange tab right here, and you just want to line it up with the orange dot. Go ahead, slide it in, and it'll click in place. And then you want to select one of your SD cards. And what you want to do is you want the label pointed in that direction. And then you just want to push it in, and you're good to go. Now that we have the camera set up, let's go ahead and turn it on for the first time. And what you'll be presented with is the startup screen. So go ahead and select the language of your choice. Now I've already set up this camera before, so it didn't ask me for my date and time, but if it is your first time to set it up, it will ask you to input in the date and time. Go ahead and do that. Now, once we do this, we're not gonna go ahead and start using the camera right away because there is one step that you do wanna do before you start using your camera. So go ahead shut off your camera. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check the firmware on the camera. And we want to be sure that you're using the most up-to-date software. So what we want to do is go ahead and push down the display back button. So go ahead, and go ahead and hold it down. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the power button. And what this is going to do is this is going to bring you to a special screen telling you exactly what firmware that you're using. So your body firmware right now is 1.01 .01 and your lens firmware is 1.02. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, go to the Fuji website and check to see what the latest firmware is for both the body and the lens. And if there is an update, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and do an update. So very quickly, all we're going to do is we're just going to search for the XA7's firmware. And we can go ahead and go to the Fujifilm website. And all you need to do is download the firmware, which is very easy to do. And what you want to do next is go ahead and put that onto your SD card. Don't rename the file or anything like that. And then put it back into your camera and you should be good to go. Now that we have the firmware on the SD card, make sure that you have a fully charged battery. We're gonna go ahead and go back to the firmware menu. So we're gonna hit display again. We're gonna hold it and we're gonna hit the power button. And there we go, we're back at the display. We're gonna hit the okay button. We're gonna select the body because we're gonna go from 1.01 .01 to 1.10. Hit okay. 
and then we're gonna hit okay again. Now, a lot of you, if you actually use the smartphone app, there is an easy way to actually update it through the remote Fuji app. So go ahead and use that if you have it working with your smartphone. But this is the manual process. This is the tried and true way of doing it. So I figured I'd show it to you. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna shut it off again. And what we're gonna do is turn it back on. And now we have a fully updated camera body. And we can go ahead and start looking at some of the functionality that you get with this camera. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start looking at some of the common buttons that we'll be using. So most of these are up top. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and tilt the camera. Alrighty, so you can clearly see these buttons up top, but you can also still see the LCD screen. What I would recommend for you to do is if you are in SR+, Plus, what we're going to do is we're going to go to P, which stands for program mode. And I'll explain this a little bit later, but this is a much easier setting to get started on because it acts more like what your smartphone would do. So go ahead and go to P mode and I'll show you how to use your camera in P mode because I think this is the simplest option. The first button that we're going to talk about is your shutter release. So this is how you focus and how you take a picture. You can go ahead and use the joystick right here and you can move around the box to kind of focus in on something. So I'm gonna focus in on this light right here. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for the beep and I can take a picture. Over on the back right side, there is another button right here on top of this dial. This actually lets you start recording movies. So if you hit this button, you'll notice that this orange light turns on and this little dot starts blinking. This tells you you're actually recording. So it's very convenient to jump from taking a picture to taking a quick movie. So if you can just go back and forth very easily. So if you wanna stop, obviously if you hit this button again, it's gonna stop recording. So just to finish off all of the buttons on the top of the camera, we're gonna talk about these two dials right here. So there is a dial right here, which turns left and right, and there's also another dial right here. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about them. Let's go ahead and talk about this front dial right here. And what you'll notice is that when I actually move the dial to the left, this right here, which is your f-stop, which is your aperture, starts to change. So basically, this changes your depth of field. So the more I go to the left, the higher the number goes, and that means the more things in your image stays in focus. This is something that you're gonna have to get a feel for, but the more you turn to the left, the more things in your scene is going to be in focus, but when you're first starting out, I definitely recommend going with the smallest number because that's gonna let in the most light and that's gonna allow this number to go to a higher number, which means you're usually gonna get less blurry of an image. So I tend to stick with low numbers if this is the first time you're using this camera. The command dial on your right over here, this is your exposure compensation. So this controls this meter over here. And when you turn it, what it does is it adjusts the overall brightness of your picture. So if you notice when you're taking pictures and it looks a little bit too dark, you can actually come over here and brighten up your picture. Or if you notice that it's a little bit too bright, you can go ahead and lower your overall exposure. So this is really, really easy to use. And it's very important when you're in program mode because it allows you to make very fast adjustments to your overall exposure when you're taking videos and also when you're taking pictures. So very useful dials to know about. So let's go ahead and talk about all of the buttons on the back of the camera. So we've covered all the buttons on the top of the camera. Let's go ahead and talk about these buttons right here. The first one that I do want to talk about is your joystick. And the reason why we went to P mode up here on this top dial is because in P mode, you're allowed to control this focus box. So you can actually move this focus box wherever you want and then you can get focus. So when you have pressed on your shutter button, this turns green telling you that you're in focus and then you can move to the other side. You can actually touch the screen to get focus too, but that's a different story. If you push in on this box right here, it actually allows you to zoom in. Although to be honest with you, that's not the functionality that I want on this joystick. And I'll show you a little bit later on on how to change the functionality of this particular joystick. One of the problems with the default configurations is that if you touch something and you get focus on that, there's no way to get out of focus. You can touch somewhere else to get different focus, but you can't ever move the joystick until you take a picture and then you get access to your joystick again. So I'll show you a configuration setting that you can change to kind of fix that. If you wanna get into the menu system, that's what this button is for. This will allow you to get into all of the settings on your camera. We're gonna cover that in a different video, so we're not gonna do anything with that right now. 
what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit the back button to go back to our main screen. The button down here, this button's actually recessed because you can accidentally press it and that's not a good thing because people get very confused on that. But if you push the button, you'll notice that all of the display items go away. If you push it back again, all of the display items come back. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where there's nothing on the screen, it's most likely that you accidentally hit the display button and that's the reason why all of the menus and all of the readouts uh, disappeared on you. The last two buttons that we have to talk about is up here. This is your drive button, which lets you select the different modes that you can actually use. So right now we're in still images. You can go ahead and go to high burst. So if you go to high burst, this allows you to take a whole lot of pictures at once. If you hit this button again, this allows you to do bracketing. This allows you to change ISO bracketing. And a lot of these we're not gonna talk about because they get a little bit more in depth to different types of features. If you wanna go between stills and movies, so they're at the top and at the bottom. But for this quick start guide, we're just gonna stick with still images for now. And we'll jump into movies on another video. So the last button to talk about is your play button. This basically allows you to look through all of your pictures. And we are actually going through different pictures, but it's just that we didn't really take many different pictures. So you have to kind of scroll through quite a bit in order to see different pictures. If you do want to delete one, you can go ahead and hit this button and it allows you to delete either a single frame. You can select uh, multiple frames. So if you go in here, you can select multiple ones, but it's a really useful way to actually select multiple pictures if you need it. So those are all of the buttons and the functionalities they do when you first get the camera out and you're actually in P mode. So very easy camera to start using. Now before ending this video, there are a couple of tips that I do want to give you. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the menu settings and, we're, and we want to get to this wrench icon. So go ahead and hit left and allow you to quickly get to the wrench icon. And down here are a lot of different setups that you do wanna know about when you first initially wanna set up your camera. So the first one we're gonna dive into is user settings. And what's important in here is that you can actually format your SD card. So you can come in here, hit okay, and you can format your SD card. I'm not gonna do that because I do wanna save some of these pictures in case we actually wanna look at them again, but it's really important to know that's how you format your pictures. The next one down is your sound setup. So if you don't like any of the beeping, which I tend to turn all of these off myself because I don't really like any of the sounds, you can go ahead and turn them off right here. So it's very useful on that. The next one down is your screen setup. Now there is a lot of stuff to do in here and to go through all of these, we're gonna do that in a separate video. But the one that I wanna focus in on is on page two. So it's display custom settings. And in here is everything that you can actually turn on for your back screen and there's a lot of cool things that you want to turn on i for one like the frame guides i turn that on i also like the auto level i definitely turn that on histogram is another interesting one if you're a photographer and you want to use your histogram you can go ahead and turn that on i'm going to go ahead and come down i'm just going to make sure i don't miss anything that's super useful to you uh, white balance is kind of interesting you might want to see that uh, battery level, that last one right here, you definitely want to turn that on. So go ahead and hit left, come out of the screen. You can also hit the shutter button up top to come out. And what you'll see now is that there are frame guides and there's also this level. So if I go ahead and I move this around, you'll notice that I can change this so that I'm perfectly level. So right now there's this nice green line telling me that I'm level and that I have frame guides and I also have a battery showing me how much battery life I have. So really useful things to have. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the menu button again, go back down to the wrench icon and we're gonna quickly look at button settings. And what we wanna see here is the functionality and button setups and the only reason why we want to jump down here is that if you actually want to change what your buttons do on your camera, I personally don't recommend that you change this right now, especially when you first start learning your camera. But if you do want to change what your buttons do, this is a good place to start. Now at any time, if you want to go back to taking pictures 
all you have to do is half press down on your shutter button and this will bring you back to the main menu or you can hit the back button down here. But the last thing that I do want to talk to you about is remember in the joystick, if you push inward, it allows you to zoom in to check focus. This is something that can be very useful to you. And if this is what you like, then don't change it. But the only problem that I have is that if you touch the focus, once you have that in focus, there's no way to actually get out of that because it's focused in right here. You have to take a picture before you actually get back control of your joystick again. So this is something that I don't like. So what I can do is I can go into the menu icon again, go back into the wrench and go into buttons. And right here on the focus lever settings. So in here, instead of zooming, what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and select the on. And then if I half press, what I can do now is that if that focuses, I can go ahead and hit this button. So what this screen allows me to do is I can actually control how big my focus area is with my dial back here. So I can make it super small or I can make it super big. So this is actually very useful, but as a secondary feature, if I were to touch to focus, now that it's locked it, I can go ahead and push inward. I can go into this type of a menu display. And when I have push on my shutter again, I can go ahead and move my focus box around without having to take a picture. Also, I can push inward at any time and I can control the size of my focus box, which is very useful because if you want to get precision focus, you can go ahead and easily bring it down to a small dot, or if you just want to be a little bit more general, you can go ahead and make it into a bigger square. So this is my recommended functionality when I push you in on the joystick. It's what I'm very used to, but if you actually like the zoom feature, then go ahead and don't change that. Another thing that I want to talk about very quickly is that while you're in here, if you had the box all the way over here, if you push inward again, it always centers. So if you the butt, so if the focus box is over here, you can push once, push twice, and it'll recenter it for you. It's a little bit of an easier way to get your box right back into the center, and it can save you quite a bit of time. So this is all the functionality that I want to talk to you about in this first video to get you started very quickly. If you have any questions, definitely leave in the comments below. I read all of my comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. There will be more videos to come to cover other things about this camera system, but I just want to make a quick video on how you can get started with your X-A7.